Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online. I would like for you to go with me to Isaiah chapter 62. And I hope this is comforting to you. I love when God comforts his people. Starting at verse 1. For Zion's sake, Will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as the lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hetzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as thy bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for that which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. They that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and shall be called, sought out a city, not forsaken. I am not forsaken. I am not forsaken. I am not forsaken. God knows my name. Listen, you guys, you have to remember that God knows everything that's going on in your life. God knows those of you who feel like you're on it, those of you who feel like you're off the beaten path, but you're striving to please God. He knows your heart. He knows where you are. So what I want to say, and I'm not talking location, he knows where you are spiritually. He knows where you are mentally, and he knows where you are emotionally. What I want you to understand is that God is working things out. He's ahead of us, making the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. Number one, he's ahead of the game. Number two, he's smoothing out the rough edges of our lives. And you have to understand he is for us, not against us. So remember, no matter what happens, no matter what seems to ruffle your feathers, no matter what seems to rattle your cage, all things work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Understand he is for you, not against you. So remembering that when things get cuckoo, you are no longer going to be termed forsaken. That's verse four, what I read in a, a minute ago. You are not going to be termed desolate. See, one of the things that a lot of us have experienced is before coming to the Lord, we were empty. We were forsa we felt forsaken, forlorn, empty, useless, uh, worthless. I mean, there just wasn't much to it. But when God comes in your life, he fills the holes in your soul. I was telling uh, Dr. D last week, that one of the things uh, years ago on in New York, for some of you who are my age or older, 70 or older, 
you might remember from uh, a New York City radio station called WWRL. And the DJ's name was Frankie Crocker. <laughs> and his, um, his phrase was, this is the show that puts more dips in your hips, more cut in your strut, more stride in your glide. Or more glide in your stride. And if you don't dig it, you know you got a hole in your soul. Well, what we don't realize, I, I say that in jest, but in reality, many of us have holes in our souls. Some of you are like a dartboard. You got holes all over you from the attacks of life, from the vicissitudes of life, from, from the, uh, the abuse that you've endured from the verbal, the physical, the psychological abuse, from the neglect, from the rejection, from the disrespect. I mean, there's just so many things that cause wounds and wound and open runny sores in our psyche and our emotions. But God, he fills every area, but you have to keep asking him. You don't just ask once and leave it on the table. You keep coming to him over and over and over because you have to understand when Jesus said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. That means you ask and keep on asking. You seek and keep on seeking. You knock and keep on knocking. You knock and you knock and you knock. And you don't stop until you start seeing some results. See, that's where some of us, the tenacity, the importunity, the persistence doesn't exist in some of us. And that's where some of you will get the best results. The more persistent, the more drive you have, the more results you get. The higher your faith will go. And the higher your faith goes, the more results you get from your prayers. It, it works together like a well-oiled machine. But you have to seek God with all your might, all your strength. <laughs> okay, listen, understand that God is working things out in your life, right? You know that the devil is there doing his job, causing friction, causing mishaps creating problems, delays, and oftentimes denials. But God, see, in the fullness of time, God gets done what his plan is. That's why the word says, and I'm saying this as a reminder to some of you, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. So if you have areas of friction, if you have financial struggle, if you have physical encumbrance, uh, uh, anyway, I messed that word up. But if you have problems, just, you know, just issues, challenges you're going through, don't lose heart because you serve a risen savior, not a dead one. Jesus is not in the tomb. He's not in the grave. He's alive and he's risen. He's very much alive and he's very much in power. He intercedes for us, believe it or not. So who best to have praying for you than your Lord and Savior? You have to remember who he is and what he does in your life. When God, see what happens a lot of times we go through life broke, busted, and disgusted, right? So you see the scripture talk about how you turn forsaken, how you turn desolate, uh, but God is saying no longer because God delights in you. You would be termed Hebzeba, Beulah, and because God delighteth in you and your land shall be married. So what God is saying in essence is he's turning the tides for you. Things are going to start revving up on the blessing side of life. And you're gonna start seeing his intervention, but you cannot lose the faith. You must keep the faith. You must keep pressing in. You must keep pressing on. You must keep moving forward. See, a lot of times people think, 
because God allowed, okay, let me put it in uh in, in ordinary terms. Uh let's say that I'm a bitter woman because God took my husband, because God took my daddy, because God took my mama, and God took my sister. And if I have kids, God took my chillings. Listen, y'all. <laughs> If you were to go and try to reach and pull them back on earth, they would refuse to come. If they're in Christ, they would not come back here for all the tea in China or for all the money in the world. They would not come back here. Trust me. So while you're sitting up here with a fat attitude towards God because things didn't turn out the way you want, they may have turned out the way your loved one wanted. And some of you are angry because your loved one is gone. But your loved one might be happier than they've ever been. You see, <laughs> God is sovereign. And one thing I have found, I've seen it with my husband, I've seen it with my father, I've seen it with different people. When a person is ready to go home and be with the Lord, no monkey can stop that show. Because that's between them and God, not you. Not the ones left behind. That's between them and God. And God will honor their wishes. Their wishes come before yours. Now, they happen to be in agreement with you. There you go. You know, you might have so, a few good miracles coming. But if they want to go home and they're tired and they don't tell you because they don't have the energy to battle you about not wanting to stay, then that's between them and God. And God will do what the two of them want, not what you want, because it's not your life, it's theirs. You got to remember that. Okay, now we dealt with a little bit of death. All right, some of you get angry because your loved one died in a tragedy, in a horrible car accident. Well, don't you realize that the Bible says, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Death does not have sting in a born-again Christian's life. When they go, they go. Boom, it's over. Pain gone. They're like, whoa, where am I? Oh, look at this. I'm in heaven. Guess what? I'm in the Lord's presence. You really think they want to come back to this painful body? All wrecked up, torn up, beaten up, and got to go through years of rehabilitation? You really think they want to come back so you can be happy having them around? Really? All right. Now, here's the other thing you got to think about. When life hits hard, oftentimes there are lessons. The best thing to do is say, Lord, open my eyes to what you want me to learn in this. Open my eyes to what you want me to become aware of in me. Because I don't want this to last any longer than it has to. And I know all things work together for the good. So help me get through this as quickly as possible. Help me not get bitter. Help me not be angry. Help me not feel forsaken and forlorn. God will help you. I mean, when when I say God helps you, he really does. If you, if you're crushing on some sister and you're having a hard time because you're a married man and you and your wife are right there in the house, you're doing well, but you just can't keep your eyes off a girlfriend over there. Do you know you can go to God with that honesty and say, Lord, I have been lusting after that woman. I am so sorry. Or I'm not sorry. That's another honest statement. I'm not sorry. I enjoy lusting after them. So, Lord, I need your help. Would you rearrange, do something in me, make an adjustment in me, help me so that I don't, I mean, help me. He's not going to stop you from doing it, but he will give you the power. And as you put forth the effort, he will put forth the success. And before you know it, that's not even an issue any longer. Why? Because you ask God to help you. So when God sees you fighting, scratching and digging and reaching and seeking, knocking and asking to live that holy life, when God sees you begging and pleading, scratching and digging, asking, praying and seeking and knocking to Please him in your life. God will give you all kind of supernatural help, y'all. 
You're not doing this by yourself. You're not in the battle alone. God is in the ring with you. And he's behind you giving you the strength to fight off the enemy. Do you see what I'm saying? But you have to stay in his face. You have to stay in his face when you want what's right and when you want what's wrong. And you have to be real, transparent, and honest with him. And you will start to see the tide turn in your life. And what happens with that is the, the things you struggled with, the things that were weighing you down, God, uh, Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He will begin to lift that off of you. And as he lifts it off of you and the tide begins to change and things start to happen in your favor, what will end up happening is the people around who looked at you funny, the people around that, that had little funny things to say, some of the people that were your worst enemies. Well, in time, because you operated in God's ways, they might end up being your greatest allies. I've seen that happen. People that didn't get me, people that didn't understand me, didn't like me at first, just didn't jive with me. But before long, after three, four, or five years of purity hell and constant forgiving on my part, constant praying and crying, guess what? Some of them became my greatest allies. See, those are the reasons why when you live for God, you cannot be determined to be spiteful, vengeful, unforgiving, you, bitter. You cannot go that route because you are literally canceling out God's interventions. You really are. But if you are willing, now I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Some of you may not be able to forgive, and that is an honest fact. But guess what? God is the forgiver. And if you are filled with God and, and you are in Christ and his Holy Spirit is in you, you have the power in you, even though you and your natural cannot. God can enable you, but you must ask. And when you ask God to enable you to forgive, you will find that forgiving is way more easier than you ever thought it could be because now you have another power working with you. <laughs> now, as your life begins to take that turn and the blessings start to come in, you will see God's favor working on your behalf. It, it's like a slow transformation. You will start seeing some of the people who seem to work against you, hinder you, ignore you, disrespect you, will start having a new level of respect. And if they don't, God will replace them with people who do. And you will find that your latter end will be greater than your former. And you will find the people that love and respect you will be there at your latter half way more than they were at the first because you had to go through all the tests and trials to get to that point. But boy, I tell you, when you get there, you're going to love how it feels to be around people who love God. You're going to love how it feels to see problems getting resolved so much faster because God is first in your life, because God is the center of your attraction so to speak. Mm -hmm. He takes center stage in your life and God starts to put you in front and shows the world how he favors you and how he delights in you like this word says. And you will start to look better and better as the years go by. People will see you in a different light rather than the peon. They will look up to you rather than the, the one that the, the butt end of every joke. God, they will look up to you as the one with the wisdom, the one they admire, the one who, who represents God in an honorable way. 
And that's when your land becomes the land of Beulah. That's when things get beautified in your life because you're getting beautified on the inner man. You're being strengthened on the inner man. It starts inside. It works from the inside out. And God will begin to show you off to the world because you have obeyed till it hurts. You have forgiven. You have fought with tears for the power to forgive. You have bent over backwards trying to obey God, even when you didn't do it right all the time. You put forth that effort, boy. You jumped in head first and you did whatever it took. You lost friends. You lost jobs. You did what it took to obey God, no matter what. But guess what? God honors, and he has not forgotten your labor of love. Remember that as well. So no matter how they treat you, no matter what they say about you, no matter how they look at you, no matter what their attitudes are towards you, you keep yourself in the way of God, and you watch things start to turn around. See, God will either turn those people around, or God will remove them from the picture altogether. And either way, you won't have to deal with that crap any longer. It will come to a stop. There comes a point, I love the song in the Messiah that quotes the scripture that says, your warfare is complete. What does that mean? No more war, baby. That war that you've been fighting for 15, 20, or 30 years is over. When God says time, that means the pen's got to go down on the paper. The test comes to a complete close. Turn it in, baby. The testing time is over. And what you end up doing is benefiting from all the times you cried, all those tears you shed, all that time you struggled and fought for God's way. You struggled to obey God through the hard times, through the pain, through the struggle, or through the rain. <laughs> you will find that God will reward you openly because of all the sacrifices that you yielded to him secretly and publicly. God bless you. Be encouraged. Know that God understands the struggle you've gone through. God understands what you've been through. Now here, I got to say this real quick before I close. God did not call you to be a doormat. So that doesn't mean that because you forgive, you stay and let them keep whooping your behind. I had to throw that in. Forgiving does not mean you stay in the struggle. Forgiving does not mean you 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 bend over and say, kick me some more. I'll just keep taking it until you see the love of God. No, baby. No, that's not what God wants for you. You find out what God wants for you. And some of you just got to cut some people loose. That's what you got to do. You don't have to allow people to stay in your life. You don't have to allow people to wreck your peace and disturb your peace. You don't have to allow people to wreak havoc in your life. If you have to do without to have peace, harmony, joy, and be in God's presence, God knows how to get you back to square one. He knows how to get you from point A to point B. He knows how to take care of you. You don't need that person. So you don't need to get a black eye in order to have a roof over your head. You don't need to get a broken jaw in order to have a roof over your head. You don't need to be treated like some dog out on the street in public because you need a roof over your head. Baby cakes, you better have more faith in God than that person that's beating you down. And I, I had to throw that in because God will take you and make something beautiful out of your life. But do you trust him to do it? Or would you rather get those booty whoopings just to have a roof over your head because it's a pretty roof? Hmm, think about that one. All right, trust God, live for him and see what he will do for you, for you. God bless you. <laughs>